is all the best with me, Georgia Moody, and our theme this week is power plays. Zara Stardust is a penthouse pet, the Australian pole dance champion and an award-winning stripper. She's also the policy officer at Scarlet Alliance, the Australian Sex Workers Association, advocating for sex industry law reform. It's hard to believe that she was once a corporate solicitor in a suit. All the Best contributor Liam Neerham interviewed Zara while she was posing for a photography shoot and found out why, as a feminist, she believed she needed to swap the law for a pole. The first ever amateur competition I did was at Pure Platinum on Pitt Street and I did the Divinals, I Touch Myself. <laughs> and um, I had like my partner at the time there to watch me and I think I came third or something like that. I got a prize and I was completely stoked with myself and after that I was hooked. When I was working in a top tier law firm, I was teaching pole dancing at the same time. So by day I was doing law and by night I was doing pole. And during the daytime, it just felt like I was in this place where you know, I was in a concrete jungle. I was losing my flexibility really quickly because I had to sit in an office chair. They seemed to feel like creativity was wearing a lavender coloured tie <laughs> with your suit. <laughs> and this was for me coming from a place where I'd worn costumes where snap G-strings and giant wings and glitter and sequins and really drag-like makeup and, you know, this enormous stage performance and people were constantly testing the bounds of their imagination. And so for me, I felt like it was such a stifling place. It was really hierarchical and I just cried all the time. And then at night time, I would go to the pole studio. Everyone would be in their pink polka dot hot pants upside down, you know, and it was a place where there were all these women there where you could feel good about yourself and about the world and spread love and spread peace. And it felt like you were actually making a difference to people's lives and making the world a better place. I left and ran for parliament for the Australian Sex Party straight afterwards, which caused kind of scandal and celebration at the same time. I met one of the senior associates at, from my firm when I was on the husting handing out how to vote condoms. I wasn't sure what to do, so I handed him a condom. Turns out I got sent an email sometime later saying that indeed he had voted for sex. <laughs> so actually, People were much more supportive than um, I had imagined and it was the best thing I ever did, leaving law for pole. That's where my heart is. I'm a lifer in this industry, I think. Here in the wild, we observe one of the most extraordinary of creatures. This exotic species of female is a notorious protagonist of the underground. She's loved and hated, adored and scorned. She is, of course, the pole dancer. You let me violate you. Some say pole originated from pagan Beltane rituals where people danced around maypoles to celebrate fertility. Pole was also popular thousands of years ago in India um, called Malakam, where it was predominantly a male sport. The poles were much thicker and they were made from wood and they had a little ball on the top. There's also a long history of circus pole, of Chinese pole within the circus. And in this genre, the poles are sticky, they're static and they're very high. Pole dancing, as it's known today in clubs, became popular in Canada and the United States during the 1980s. Um, there are many different kinds of poles. They um, differ in their textures and their slip factors. You can get them in brass, titanium, chrome, stainless steel. Uh, you can get them from 38 millimetres to 50 millimetres, which is the international standard size. And we use a number of different grips to stick to the pole, um, from shaving cream, hairspray, dry hands, which is a kind of liquid chalk. Pole dancing actively resists stereotypes of feminine passivity, women as weak. And it's 
displays of agility, flexibility, strength, physical stamina. Maneuvering one's own body weight upside down with circus-like ease on a 38 to 50 mil pole is no easy feat. Pole dancers often supplement their skills with aerial training like trapeze, silks, lira. So contrary to these assumptions about women as docile or passive or weak, many pole dancers take great pride in our muscles and our core stability. And I often hear women joking proudly about trying clothes on in stores and not being able to get them over their lats or their delts um, because they have the shoulders and biceps of men, they say. And they take real pride in this. Pole events and competitions are patronised by an overwhelmingly female audience. This is the case for burlesque events, pole dancing events and ladies nights at strip clubs as well. In their book, The Porn Report, Alan McKee, Catherine Albury and Catherine Lumby write that women are increasingly consuming sexually explicit material these days. And I think this translates into a range of genres, including pole. Miss Pole Dance Australia is performed for a predominantly female audience. Even in strip clubs, strippers often pay special attention to women in the audience. In her memoir, Strip City, Lily Barana writes that it takes real nerve for a woman to come into a strip club, and it's a form of female misbehaviour I think should be richly rewarded. I feel that there's an increasing amount of anti-stripper sentiment in the pole community. Recently, a pole competition commenced in Australia that attempted to limit entrance to those who are not exotic dancers, and after much outcry from the pole industry, they changed the criteria to be only open to reputable contestants. Another pole dancer I spoke to was asked to renounce her title from one competition after she mentioned in a media interview that most of Australia's best pole dancers were indeed strippers because the competition didn't want to be associated with that. The World Pole Dance Federation as well renounces any involvement with the sex industry and bans the winner from accepting any contracts that are erotic in nature. So when Susie Q was the runner-up of Miss Pole Dance Australia in 2008, her prize was meant to be to compete um, at the World Championships, but because the World Pole Dance Federation, whose motto is pure sport and art, reject any association with the sex industry. So she was asked to give up hosting Sexpo and told that if she won, that she would decline any contracts or endorsements with any companies that were in any way erotic. And while this has been really useful because it's made pole something that is accessible to the mainstream, um, I think it's really harmful when the fitness benefits of pole are used at the expense of stigmatising other kinds of pole and by extension stigmatising other kinds of women, other kinds of movements and other kinds of work. Particularly in a world that continues to divide women into Madonna or whore, the pole dancing industry should be a space where women are united to celebrate all different kinds of expression. Pole is not striptease, it's not the same thing, and not all pole dancers are strippers, but they do have a really intertwined history. And pole doesn't need, I don't think, this overemphasis on fitness, like I only do pole dancing for fitness, I'm not that kind of girl, in order to legitimate it, to rescue it from some kind of immoral bacchanalian depravity. We need to stop running away from women's bodies and embrace all different kinds of female sexuality. That was Zara Stardust speaking to Liam Neerham. Today's show was produced by Hardy Pett, Kate Ryan and Liam Neerham.